Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 20th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apple today did one of its patch everything days. It updated tvOS, watchOS, iOS, and macOS High Sierra. Now, the good news here is that all of these updates only include one single patch for one vulnerability, and this is the denial of service vulnerability using these Indian characters that cost, for example, iMessage, and with that, sometimes iOS to crash. The exploit has been out in the wild for a couple of days now. If you have been affected by it, then definitely do update. This is something that has been really sort of used occasionally as a prank so far. Hasn't uh, been used in a more targeted way, the way I have seen it at least uh, being used at this point. So I don't really think this is a huge thing that you have to fix right away. If you are being affected by it, it's annoying, but you can definitely recover from it relatively easily. So apply this patch as you get around to it in the next few days. And Flight Simulator add-on maker Flight Sim Labs is in hot waters over something that can probably be best described as hacking back. Flight Sim Labs creates mods for Microsoft's Flight Simulator, and one that was released recently does add a simulation of the A320X to the program. Now, this particular mod is sold for $100, so there is some incentive by enterprising people to actually pirate this particular mod. Well, it turns out that Flight Sim Labs did identify a couple of serial numbers that were pirated quite aggressively. And what they did to fight back was that they actually added an additional component to this particular mod if one of those particular serial numbers was used. That component went by the innocent sounding name test.exe and Flight Sim Labs does describe it as part of their DRM or digital rights management. Now, typical digital rights management prevents you from using uh, software, but in this case, what this software actually does is that it does obtain a copy of all of the passwords stored in your browser, and it's going to send it back to Flight Sim Labs. So these are not just uh, passwords related to this particular product. Uh, these are all passwords from anything that you saved in your browser. Flight Sim Labs stated that they're using this information in order to identify the actual pirates and well, that is probably going to work given that you now know other email addresses and passwords that users may have used on other sites. And apparently they are already using this information in legal battles against these pirates. Personally, I think this is probably going a little bit too far. We'll have to see how this actually works out from a legal point of view. Let me have a little bit more detail about a vulnerability that was fixed by Microsoft last week. This vulnerability affected Microsoft's anti-malware scan interface, and this is essentially what Windows 10 uses to sort of provide hooks for antivirus scanners and such in order to receive data. So for example, if you're executing a script or a command, this will trigger an anti-malware scan interface event, and then anti-malware can subscribe to these events. So whenever you start that script, a copy of the script is being sent to your anti-malware, and it is then able to block it. The problem here was how this particular anti-malware scan interface dealt with the null byte. Now, in most cases, the zero or null byte is considered the end of string and that's what AMSI did here it only copied the part up to the null byte to the anti-malware software 
The reason this was a problem is that PowerShell scripts may contain the null byte without actually terminating the script. So the script may continue past the null byte. So really all that hacker had to do is include a null byte early in the script and then anything beyond the, mal the null byte would not be sent to the anti-malware scanner and as a result would not get detected. So this has been fixed in last week's update and uh, hopefully you have gotten around to apply these patches because this would be something that's rather simple to exploit. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.